Hey, it's Rick. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'll show you how I used proportional dividers to help me draw this image from reference material. At the end of the video, I'm going to do a little forensic investigation and see how I deviated from the original photo. These are proportional dividers. This is a cheap set off Amazon. I think they cost around 10 bucks. You can get a more expensive set of brass ones, but that's not necessary for this. I've painted the tips of these red to make them easier for me to see. You can do a few different things with these. If you move the pivot pin to a different hole, you can alter the relationship between the ends. This allows you to measure a drawing or a map, for example, and transfer those dimensions to another drawing, but at a different scale. So you would measure your original with one end, then switch to the other end when drawing it on the new surface, making it larger or smaller. I'm not going to use them that way today, I'm simply using them like a ruler. I'm going to pick an arbitrary distance on the face and use that measuring unit to help me figure out the proportions of the face. So for example, if I choose the distance between the bottom of the chin and the bottom of the bottom lip and call that one unit, I can see that the total head height is around five and a half units. I can also see that the total distance of both eyes is around two units. And I can see that the width of the head at the eyes is roughly equal to the distance from the chin to the eyebrows. This is a very useful tool for drawing. So here's the setup for this drawing. I'm going to be sitting on my couch and six or eight feet away, I'll have my reference photo on my television. I've got a camera behind my head as well, so you can see my measurements, but the divider doesn't line up with the camera, only with my line of sight. So as I said, I'm going to use the distance between the bottom of the chin and the bottom of the lip as my measuring unit. I determine that the head is roughly five and a half units high from the bottom of the chin to the top of the hair, which is just cut off in this photo. Now I'm going to determine the size of that unit for my paper, something that when multiplied by five and a half times gives me the head size I want. I've marked where the chin will go, and now I'm putting little hash marks at every increment. And this is going to be the top of the hair. I can see that the bottom of the nose is just below the second hash mark, so I rough that in. I check the angle of the center line of the face with the edge of the dividers and use that like a ruler to lightly pencil that in. I determine that the line that cuts through the corner of the eyes is just below the third hash mark, so I rough that in as well. And I measure the angle of the eyes and rough that in too. This will be my reference plane for the tilt of the head. The next thing I want to figure out is roughly how wide the eyes are. Turns out they're around two units wide. So you can see, first I get my reference unit by measuring the distance from the base of the chin to the bottom of the bottom lip on my sketch, and then place points to indicate the width of both eyes. I loosely draw in the side of the face, just to give me something to measure off of, taking into account the tilt of the head. The profile dips in right at the eye sockets. I do a little bit more comparison to see how the profile bumps and divots line up vertically with other features. I've determined that one unit equals the distance from the right edge of his face to the bridge of his nose, and another unit takes me out to the pupil of the left eye and another unit puts me at the edge of his sideburn. Now I can sketch in more of his hairline. The top of the eyebrows are roughly halfway between the third and fourth hash marks, so I can rough those in. It looks like the width of the mouth is roughly 1.2 units, and it's roughly half a unit from the right edge of the face. Then I loosely sketch in the rest of the lips, guesstimating their placement. I measure for the width of the nose, which is about 20% less than one unit, and slightly less than that in distance from the right edge of the face. I'll rough in some more of the nose just based on what I'm seeing in the photo. I can see that the sideburn ends about halfway between the level of the eyes and the bottom of the nose, so I'll put that in too. Next, I can see that the width of the ear is about two-thirds of a unit. The top of the ear is about level with the top of the eyes and comes down level with the bottom of the nose. It looks like I've put the hairline in the wrong spot, so I'll have to erase it and do it again. Particularly that lump of hair. It was too low and too far to the right. 
The distance from the shirt collar to the chin seems to be slightly more than one unit. I put it in slightly too high, so I had to erase it and take another crack at it. I double check the total width of the eyes and verify that distance equals the distance from the bottom of the chin to the tip of the nose. One last feature to do is the eyes. I erase any other guides and then try to recreate their shape by carefully observing the reference. The particular shape of the eye is very important to capturing a likeness. Pay attention to their angle and the distance between them. Some people's eyes are closer together and some farther apart, with the average gap being equal to the width of one eye. I don't so much draw the iris as I'm drawing the negative space around it, the white of the eye. I find this gives me a more accurate result. Then I rough in the forehead wrinkles. At this point, the head still looks wrong to me, like it's too wide, so I take another measurement. I decide it is a bit too wide, so I move everything on the left side over a bit and erase the old line work. That's about it for the layout. Now I'm going to shade the whole thing with white and black charcoal pencils. I'll start with the white first. This part of the video isn't really about measuring with proportional dividers, so I'll just let this part run with no commentary. Stick around to the end though and I'll show you how my drawing compares in proportion to the original. Now to compare the two. I'll take this original and trace over it to give me a relatively accurate outline. I've scanned my drawing in, and by placing this over top, I can see where I went wrong. Basically, I should have spent more time double-checking the proportions, but that's always the case. I get bored with the preparation and just want to dive into the shading. So by placing the layer over top and scaling it to fit, you can see the discrepancies. I did all right on the head, some issues with the eyes, I think they're too big, but the neck and shoulders are way off. I didn't do enough measurements for that part. Using this layer as a guide, I'll use the liquify filter in Photoshop to push the image around until it lines up. So here's what the liquified version looks like, the one based on the traced image. And here's my original. You can see when I switch back and forth between them, there's some wonkiness to my drawing. I need more practice. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to hit all the buttons on your way out, and thanks for watching.